Hello and welcome to the Nitronic Rush level editor training video where I will teach you how to make a level in Nitronic Rush. First off, you need music. Uh, you can pick whatever the hell music you want. Currently for me, I'm just going to select some game music because that is probably the most neutral thing that I have. So, start playing it. Uh, isn't that soothing? So, uh, first thing you guys are going to do is obviously start up the game. Um, for artists, I'm guessing you guys are going to get an executable to start it up. But for me, I'm going to start up in Visual Studio. I'm going to hit escape, enter in the options, turn off the music. Because we already have our own. Three, two, one, rush! So, we're in the uh, first level. We don't want to make our level in the first level, obviously. But, before I do anything, I'm going to tell you guys how to enter into the editor. Basically, you hit Alt, and then tilde, and now you're in the editor. So, to exit out of the editor, it's Alt, tilde. So, let's uh, jump to... Well, basically, let's get to an area where we can create our own level. Basically, you're going to page up, and then alt tilde, and now we are in a blank level, and we've opened up the level editor. So the first thing you're going to do in this blank level is create a level. So to do that, we have to give it a name. But in order to give it a name, you have to give it a file path. So for me, I will pretend that I did not have that file open. And I'll go to computer, uh, my file structure. For you get for the artists, I'm guessing you're gonna be in Dropbox, Electronic Rush, and there's probably going to be a level folder somewhere in here where you guys will have your levels. I'm not too sure if all of our levels are gonna be moving over there, so I'm just going to build something in uh, SVN currently. So I'm gonna to go to my level folder. And you're going to grab your file path. So control C that, and control V it into the level file name, uh, enter, enter a piece, so control V it, and then backslash, and then uh, now that you've done a backslash, you're going to name your level. We're going to name this level training level 1.xml. So basically, you control V your file path, enter in a backslash, name your level, and then do .xml because that is our file name, or that's our file type. So once we have our file path and the name of the file, we're going to create it by hitting the create new button. So now you get this uh, box down here. So, what we need to do before we do anything now is add a layer. And now we're going to name that layer. I'm going to name it Root. And then, before you do anything, before you place anything into the level, set this layer as the active layer. This guy, right here. If you do not set it as the active layer, if you do not set a layer as an active layer, anything that you put into the game or anything that you put into that level will not be saved so always make sure you have an active layer or you will lose everything you put into the level so be wary of that so we're all set as active and then we're going to move this window by grabbing the top of it and bam it's been moved so now we need to drop stuff into this level so go to assets icons I don't know how you guys will be accessing that I'm sure Chris will have some form some way for you guys to do it so we're gonna drop a road piece into here so let's drop a road straight piece so I'm gonna grab this thing and then gra drag it over into the uh, game window and when I drag it over to the game window it's gonna pop up right where this crosshair is because this crosshair determines where uh, your stuff goes when you drop it into the level. So I'm going to drop it in. 
And hey, look, the road piece dropped in. But we're really close to this road piece. So let's uh, zoom out by scrolling, by clicking into the window and then zooming out. Be wary that whenever you drop something into the level editor, it does not bring focus to the game window. So you have to click into the game window to give it focus. So, now that we have our road piece, I'm going to show you how to uh, move around your level. So to pan around your level, hold shift and then left click. And now we're moving around our level. We're panning around it. But oh wait, we lost sight of our uh, road piece. Thankfully, our road piece is currently attached to our crosshair. So if we hit C, uh, the camera will look at the crosshair. So if we zoom back in, hey look, it's our crosshair. Crosshair is basically the center point of your camera. So to do what I just did there, basically rotating around your center point, hit Alt and then left click and move your mouse around to move around the road piece. Okay, cool. So to move around your center point and to move around where stuff are dropped in, left click anywhere in the editor. So now if I drag in this road piece, it'll pop up right there. Awesome. So now to select different objects, basically right click on an object and it's selected. If I right click on this one, right click on that one, right click on this one, right click on that one. Hey, look, it always works. Isn't that awesome? So basically I'm going to delete this road right now. Just hit delete and it is deleted. Now I'm going to show you how to move stuff. So to move this object, you're going to select it, then hit G. But if we just hit G and start moving our mouse around, we notice that uh, it's not really moving in any guaranteed direction. It's just kind of moving along all its axes, X, Y, and Z. And that's bad. We never want that happening because that's just weird. So let's escape and hit G again, and then choose our axis. So let's say Z. So now the object is going to be, hey. So sometimes this happens, and if stuff isn't moving, just escape out again, hit G, and then choose your axis again. We're going to choose Z again. And now we're going to be moving along the Z axis. Escape, G, and then X will be along the X axis. G, Y will be along the Y axis. And then G shift Z will be negating the X the Z axis and will mo be moving along the X Y axis. And escape always cancels a movement. So if I hit G uh, shift Y, we'll be moving along the X and Z axis. And then if I hit uh, G shift X, we'll be moving along the Y and Z axis. So let's move this road piece uh, back a little and then down a little. So and then alt tilt it out to have our road Three, piece two, not do that. We're gonna lower it uh, below the car. Awesome. So now the uh, this road piece is not as big as our the road pieces in uh, the levels I've created. So I'm gonna scale it up to be the size of the road piece. And the way that I determine that is if this center line or if these white uh, uh, lights can fit uh, the road pe uh, the car into it. So I'll show you what I mean. Basically we're going to hit S and then we're going to move our mouse to scale the road. So actually we're going to move this road piece a little bit forward so I can look at the lights. And that's almost correct, but we're going to scale it up just a little bit more. Aha, now we're good. Now the car can fit within that center line, which is how I determine how big a road piece needs to be. So we've got our set road pieces, or our set road piece size, but what about uh, connecting other road pieces to this road piece? So to do that, Basically, we're going to hit J, and notice that orange circle right there? Well, uh, when you drop in another road piece, as we'll do right now, and then you hit K, the road piece will attach to this road, and 
grab its properties and scale to it to this road. So as you can see, this road piece is definitely not as big as this road piece. So if I hit K, it's just going to automatically scale to this road piece's scale. So if I hit J again, notice that the orange circle moved over here. Right click here, hit K, and the road piece will shift over to there. So now, it's going to be really annoying if I have to drag a road piece into here every single time that I want to be able to uh, make another road piece. So in order to uh, quickly make road pieces, you can just hit Shift and then D, and now you have another road piece. And to connect it, hit K again to move the orange circle to the edge of this road, hit J, K, J, J. Shift D, K, J, J, Shift D, K. Awesome. Now we have a long straightaway. Badass. So now, let's uh, place, let's hit C, and now let's place an obstacle. Placing an obstacle. Oh, this, I've ran to the issue. Uh, I don't have my game window selected, so I'm affecting whatever was already uh, active in the windows. So I need to click back into the editor, and now I am back in the editor. So let's scale this guy up, hit S, move him along the XY axis, scale it up a little bit. Uh, also with scale, you can scale it among... Uh, Scale it along its uh, x-axis, scale along its y-axis, scale it along its z-axis. And uh, this goes um, the same with rotating an object. So basically, let's rotate it. So if I rotate it just like uh, moving an object, it's just going to rotate around wherever the hell. So basically, you're going to want to hit R and then choose your axis. So Z, it's going to rotate along it around its Z. R, X, rotate around your X axis. R, Y, rotate around your Y. But I want to rotate it around its X a little bit. There we go, that's awesome. So also, with uh, rotating objects, you have to wonder, well, if I rotate my objects in a weird way, and I want to move it along its local X, can I do that? Well, sure as hell you can. So basically hit G, X, X, and you move your object along its X, its local X axis. This obviously goes the same with your Y axis and your uh, Z axis, as we can see it coming close to us. So let's delete it because I don't want to do a pain in the ass of trying to reset that shit. So let's scale it. Oh, that's way too big. And there we go. Awesome. So now though, we want to be able to affect when this thing pops up. Because this is one of our pop-up blocks. Basically, once the car gets close enough, the block will pop up. And that's all these things named blockers right here. But anyway, let's select this. And whatever object you have selected, if you hit tab, it'll open up that object's options, or uh, properties. So we have our light up distance. Basically, this is how far the car away needs to be before the car can actually see it light up. So I'm going to set that to 200. I'm going to set the block distance up to... Uh, let's set it to like 100, see what happens there. So now that I have these set, I'm going to alt tilt it out of the editor, and as you can see, I can see the block, but it hasn't popped up yet. So let's drive over to it a little bit. Ah, uh, look, it just popped up. You're going to want to experiment with uh, that block popping up on the weak sauce. So you're going to want to experiment with when that block pops up. You're going to want to give the player some time to be able to react to that object. Usually I like counting uh, to two seconds and then turning away from the object to determine that a player should be able to do this. So, one one thousand, two one thousand. That's pushing it a little bit. 
Like, I barely got to two. And I'm betting that if I was close to the object, I would probably blow up. Or if I, if I had been... Uh, more over. So let's try this again. One, two, one thousand. Yep. That's a bit too close. So basically, you're going to want to space them out to where players can react to them. So let's alt it back into the editor. Maybe move that guy. Oh, no, we don't need to move it. Basically, we need to tab into it, change this guy to maybe like 145. Let's see what that does. Oh, that's a little bit too much. 125. There we go. So let's, let's uh, boost into this guy. Oh, that's plenty good actually. Like if that pops up that far away, then the player will definitely see it. Awesome. So let's alt tilt it back out of the editor, or back into the editor. Close this guy. And then, what we are going to do is that we are going to place a building down. Place a building. Notice how it's really small, so we need to scale it up by hitting S. Rotate it along with Z. Move it down a little bit so the player can't see the base of it, because it looks like shit if they can. But the problem is right now, is that these, up, these buildings are green, blue, and purple. Not red. So we want to change that to red. So we're going to grab the object's properties and change it to uh, being red. You can use the HLS mode or you can switch it over to RGB, whatever you like. And let's get rid of some green and some blue. And we have got our red buildings. So let's shift D, make a few more, scale them, rotate them. Shift D. Lower that guy. Uh, shift D. Duh, scale it down a little bit. Duh. Rotate it. Awesome. We've got some buildings here. Let's raise that up a little bit. Sweet. We've got some buildings. We've got our blocks and everything. Everything else is basically just tweaking and messing around with and moving stuff. Uh, to end the level, you're basically going to want to put an end tunnel at the end of it, and then it will switch over to other stuff. I don't know what will happen if you go into this end tunnel uh, when it's not actually in the array of levels. I have no idea, so I wouldn't mess with that. But I mean, just put an end tunnel at the end, just make sure not to go into it when you're uh, testing the game out. So that is about it. Um, everything else is pretty much you guys just experimenting and possibly talking to me if you want some more detail. So that is the end of this editor video. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope you guys have fun making levels in Electronic Rush.